Today in the Joy of Editing, I'm continuing to look at the filters found in Nick 8 Color Effects, part of Nick Collection 8. Today we're looking at the cross processing filter. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm continuing to look at all the filters found in Nick 8 Color Effects. And today we're looking at the cross processing filter which is different than the cross balance filter. On my previous color effects video, I went over the cross balance filter, which I'll link at the end if you haven't seen this, you can go back and watch it. That filter simulates the use of a daylight film under artificial tungsten type light or a tungsten color film used in daylight. It's a great filter to use if you wanna warm up your images or cool them down in a really beautiful way. However, today we're looking at the cross-processing filter. Now, this simulates what would happen if you were to take a color-negative film and process it in slide film chemicals, or if you took a slide film and processed it in a color-negative film chemical. And then the colors of your images would be affected in very interesting ways. And this was a way they got creative back in the film days, back when we had real dark rooms instead of digital dark rooms. Now that we know the background, let's go ahead and get started and have some fun with the cross-processing filter. I'm here in Photoshop. I have my Nick A Color Effects panel opened. I'll click Open. We'll launch Color Effects and get started. Now, we do have a ton of filters we can pick from. We want the cross-processing filter. These filters are in alphabetical order, or you could come up here to the search bar, type in cross-processing, find it really quick, or I know it's right here, cross-processing. I'll click the plus, and now we've applied that filter. It's a very easy filter to use. You have different methods you could try. This is a drop-down. You click right here, hover over the different methods. You can see the result on the image. And then we have a strength slider. How strong do you want that effect to be? Or how weak do you want it to be? And then, of course, we can protect shadows and highlights with these two sliders. And we can adjust the overall opacity of the filtered look on the image. If you drag the opacity slider to the left, you will start letting some of the original image start to show through. So that's a nice way of just kind of blending that filtered look into the image. Now, I don't do that here in... Color effects, I save that for Photoshop because I can always pull back in the layer opacity if needed. The cross-processing filter is good for any type of an image that you want to alter the colors in a very artistic way. And I thought today I'd try this stock wedding image and see what kind of a result we get. I also tried it on a landscape image, and I'll show you that result once we get back into Photoshop. Let's come up here to Method. I'll click on this drop-down. Now, I want you to notice we have two different categories. We have C41 to E6. This would be a color negative film processed in a slide film chemical. And then if we go further down, we have an E6 to C41, which would be a slide film processed in a color negative chemical. And those two processes alter the color of your image differently. We'll start out with the C41 to E6 group. Here's B01. I'll just hover over these and let me know when you like one that you see. I wish you could talk back to me here. But let's just go down through these. I'll show you a lot of the different ones here. And you can see how they're interacting on the image. Very cool, right? I love the way it's working with the different colors. Now we'll go down to the E6 to C41. Here's the first one, C01. Here's the second, third, fourth, fifth, and the last one, Y06. I kind of like this one here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Now, you just click on the one that you like. And after you do that, go up to the strength slider, and you can add more, or you can add less of the effect. Here it is at 100%. I think that's too much. I'll pull it back. And you know what? I think I like it right about here. And then you can play with your shadows and highlights. When you start to move the shadow slider to the right, the shadows start to lighten up. And you could get a nice dreamy look by doing that. Or if your highlights are too blown out, you can bring them back by taking the highlight slider and drag it to the right. You'll start to dull those highlights down. You see that? But for this image, I think maybe just the slight amount of highlight reduction would be good. Maybe right here at like 5%. I'm in the side-by-side -side compare view. The image on the left is the original. 
the filtered images on the right. And a lot of you have told me you'd like me to do it this way. And I think it's nice because you can really see what's happening to the image. Now, if you like what you see here, and I think I do, but maybe I'll just take the string slider and drag it to the left a little bit. I think it's a little too strong. Maybe right there. That looks better. When you get something you like, come down to the bottom right side of the interface and click on send as layer. That'll send that back to Photoshop. And then we can keep experimenting. Let's come back up to method and click the drop down. This time I want to go up to the first group. And there is one here I liked. Here's BO1, BO2. BO4, I like that. Here's BO5. BO4, BO5. I think I like BO5. I'm going to click on this one. Let's give it some more strength. Maybe right about here looks good. And what I think I'll do on this one is really open up the shadows and give it a nice dreamy look. Something like that. And now maybe dull the highlights down a little bit more to maybe right about here. Now, I might have too much strength, so let's pull that back a little bit, maybe to right there. I think that looks really pretty. A nice little bit of a pink cast over the entire image. It's kind of romantic looking to me. I'm done for now, but if you're not, you could come down and send that as a layer back to Photoshop and keep going and finding more looks that you like. In my case, I'm done, so I'll just click Apply, and that'll send this back to Photoshop as a layer. Now we're back in Photoshop, and there is my result that you're seeing right there. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Now, if it's too strong, this is where I do the opacity adjustment. I'll click on this opacity adjustment, and I'll just ease it off and let some of the original image come back through. And I may pull it back to, like, maybe right about there, 73%. Now, let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. I really like this look. I think it's really pretty. Let me shut off this layer. Now, this is the other layer. I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to turn this one on. This is the one I sent back as a layer to Photoshop. And then I kept experimenting. So that was this one here. And I really like this one, too. It's a little bit more high contrast. And again, I could take the opacity, take it the whole way off. And this is what I recommend. Take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and then stop where you think it looks good. And I think it looks good maybe right about here at 70%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. It's really nice. Which one do you like the best? Do you like this one or this one? I really like them both. I can't say for sure. I think I like this one. Before I go, I wanted to show you a result I got by using the cross-processing filter on this landscape image. Now, this is without cross-processing. I'll turn this layer on, and this is with. Again, without and with. And I really like it, so I highly recommend that you try this on all kinds of images. You never know. You may like it. You may not like it. But you'll never know unless you try. And it can take your image into a whole new artistic direction. Well, there it is, the cross-processing filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects, part of Nick Collection 8. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.